President-elect Donald Trump's cabinet coming together, but there is still the question of who will serve as Secretary of State. Joining us right now is the former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, John Bolton. Ambassador, obviously your name has been brought up a lot for this position, and yesterday you met with Vice President-elect Mike Pence. Tomorrow you're meeting with the President-elect himself. Can you tell us anything about these meetings? Uh, no. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't want people switching off to a more exciting channel like the Golf Channel or anything like that. So I'm, I'm still not uh, really going to commit news on this subject. All right. So you don't want to commit news. But let me ask you this, because the Secretary of State role is an incredibly important, critical role for the administration. And a lot of people are debating, you know, what does Mitt Romney have in terms of, you know, adding to that role? I mean, what has he done to make him a, a, a leading contender? What's the most important characteristic? or role or knowledge base that a person needs to be Secretary of State. How's that? You're very, you're very diligent. Uh, <laughs> look, I, I, think, I think the United States is in, a, is in a, a gravely weakened position around the world because of eight years of Obama administration policies. I think a lot of uh, the, the problems that we're going to see in the next 10, 20 years have not been discussed adequately. Uh, the media uh, has not portrayed them. People are not familiar with them. So that the extent of the decline of American influence, our ability to protect our way of life uh, here at home has been significant. And I think uh, what uh, the president-elect uh, said in the campaign, I think what he's trying to demonstrate in the transition is he wants to reverse that. There's an awful lot of work to be done to hit the ground running. Uh, sprinting really on the 20th of January. Ambassador, um, since your name is floated out there, and let's just say hypothetically, should you be nominated, how do you face your detractors who are against your nomination, given the fa fact that they talk about the Iraq war as one of the situations, your, your views on Iran? How do, you, how do you counter their arguments when such a Senator Rand Paul, who's come, against, uh, who's come out and said he, he would take pause against your nomination? Well, I still play by the own rule, the old rules, which, which may or may not be a mistake. Since nobody's been nominated yet, there's no Senate confirmation process yet, and the nominee traditionally uh, defends uh, him or herself in the confirmation process. Uh, and so uh, I know there are others out there commenting on things that haven't happened yet. Uh, that's not my style. As I say, it may be a good thing or a bad thing, but uh, I'm just not going to get into it. Ambassador, you do, it's Dagan McDowell, you do differ, though, on, say, the, the need to go into Iraq at the time with Donald Trump, don't you? Do you how, many, how many areas are there disagreement between what Trump said on the campaign trail and um, what you believe and stand for? You're a hard crew this morning, really. This is, uh, this is quite impressive. We feel I just... comfortable enough with you that we can do this. <laughs> and yeah, well, we're then... shocked you haven't just told us absolutely everything. That's what then... I was expecting from this, really. <laughs> then, then I'm sure you'll be comfortable when I say I'm not going to answer that question either. <laughs> okay. I, 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 I do, I, do you want to go? I have a follow-up, though. Yeah, go ahead. President, President Obama and the, the White House have... Uh, kind of announced uh, the grave importance of dealing with North Korea to the Trump administration. And we, we've had guests on this, this program, and including General Keene, who said that he thinks, that, thinks that's a ruse, that it's because of the disaster left in the Middle East by the Trump administration that they're trying to draw attention to, to another area of the world. And, and once again, they didn't even do, do anything with the North Korean nuclear threat. I wanted your take on that. Yeah, look, I've been dealing with North Korea for, for nearly 20 years, and uh, uh, the fact is, under the Obama administration, they have moved eight years closer to uh, the capability to deliver nuclear weapons to targets on the west coast of the United States or really uh, or across the country shortly thereafter. This is an extremely serious threat, and I think one thing that's important uh, to keep in mind is the linkages between the Iranian nuclear weapons and ballistic missile programs in North Korea. On ballistic missiles, they've been working together for nearly 20 years since uh, North Korea first uh, dropped a missile in the Pacific Ocean east of Tokyo. Uh, and there's every reason to think there's extensive cooperation on the nuclear programs as well. So when you look at the Iran deal or you look at the North Korea threat, they are not divorced. Uh, George Bush's metaphor of an axis of evil was more than a literary device. And this is the kind of linkage of problems around the world. It's not a world of discrete problems. A lot of these are linked together, characterized by the decline of 
uh, American positions of strength, political, economic, and military hmm. over the past eight years. Yeah, really great analysis. And I wanted to ask you about Russia as well, uh, because the debate on whether or not their friend or foe uh, continues. How do you deal with Russia at this point? Look, international relations is fundamentally the clash or the confluence of national interest, where American national interest and Russian national interest coincide as they might in the war against terrorism, then I think we can work with, uh, with Putin and the Kremlin. But where Putin is trying to extend Russian influence in ways that affect our national interest adversely, uh, they're going to have to be met with strength. The problem, again, of the past eight years is that the Russians and, and most of our other potential adversaries have been met with weakness. I, I think we've got uh, two months here where it's going to be very interesting to see who tries to get ring one last concession out of Barack Obama before he leaves office or who in the first 90, 180 days of the Trump administration tries to test the new president there as well. And I put Putin near the top of the list of somebody who might well try and test the new administration. Yeah, for sure. And then there's this last month and a half of the Obama administration, and they're trying to push through more deals in Cuba, right? I mean, a new report from the Journal this morning says that the White House is pushing for Cuba to secure agreements with General Electric, with Google, several American cruise lines before Trump takes office. And already we know what Trump said about Cuba. What's your take on what Obama's doing now, trying to push through as much as he can in this last month and a half? Yeah, well, you know, as we've just discussed, I don't know what my role will be uh, in the near future, but I would say this to any American business that's living. If you make a serious decision in the next two months to commit capital or resources or sign deals, trade or investment with Cuba, you're making a very serious mistake. And the notion that somehow, uh, because American businesses have gotten involved, you can't roll back uh, the policy that Obama's pursued on Cuba, guess again. I mean, here's notice. You proceed at your own risk if you're an American business dealing in Cuba in the next two months. Proceed at your own risk. Wow. Ambassador, a real quick question for you. Do, you. do you believe the U.N. ambassador role should be a cabinet-level position, given that, that I believe you once stated that, that it should not be, given that it overstates the role of the U.N., as well as um, you shouldn't have two secretaries in the same department? Right. That, that's what I've written. That's, that's been my view all along, and it still is. Okay. Ambassador, good to see you, sir. Thank you. Always glad to be with you. <laughs> Thanks for fielding all, our, all, all of our queries. Uh, great insights. We appreciate you talking to us about Cuba and Russia and, of course, uh, humoring us on the Secretary of State position, I guess.